I'm gonna click it. Let's see if uh, this makes it in the episode. Nah. What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Welcome to Raw. How's everyone doing today? I can't believe this match <laughs> graphic. I'm. Lo- is this condensed <laughs> by Discord or is no. this like? Every time, <laughs> just throw up what I'm looking at. I'll Can blur. I'll blur it? it. I'll blur it out for people that don't want to get spoiled. <laughs> but yeah. Can I see it? Yeah, I'll show you to you. Yay! What is he doing with that belt? He's. The, I don't know. <laughs> He's straight jorking it, dude. Is that belt made for a baby? Yeah. It could be. <laughs> yeah. It's like made out of fucking like two ply toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> Undertaker is missing yeah, right. an eye. Hey man, you don't you don't watch the product. <laughs> so no, no spoilers. <laughs> no spoilers. Yeah, it's I, always gonna be redacted. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't. I don't want to miss this match. I bet it's great. <laughs> How's everyone doing today? We doing good. We're finally I'm back. Ready of earthquake. I'm just ready to finish up my contract to be done with this earthquake. Earthquake. So fuck you, Nico. Go back to your bunker. So because I of will. because I of that. Will. I did watch the dark side, and this man was a former sumo wrestler. Whoa. He did not lose. He just retired and said, "You know, I want to be a wrestler instead." But Why everybody you respected him. Talking about earthquake, real quick. He passed passed away. Well, uh, Emerald did say R.I.P. He passed away in two thousand six. <laughs> not like today. Not today. No. no. <laughs> the episode no. opens up with a little memorialism. <laughs> there yeah, you go. Um, thank you for clarifying. I actually didn't know that. R.I.P. This man, he's the he's the goat. He was a very now, nice our, guy. Our latest wrestling death is uh, Psycho Sid. Oh man, may he mm. rest in Psycho. Twenty two. Oh. oh man, Goldberg. Oh. Why Psycho me? Chid. Ladies and gentlemen at home, you're in for a doozy of an episode today. Oh Penn State. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah, Penn, Penn State. State. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We gotta get the oldest. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There are sixteen segments on this episode. You can't be like this already. Oh yeah. There's too many segments. Thankfully, most of them are like ten seconds. I'll have you know, so I have twenty five hundred characters I'm, written. I'm gonna keep it real one hundred and funky with y'all. I had a really f- fun time watching this episode this week. I hate myself. This was a, this was a shockingly good episode, Ty. <laughs> <laughs> After watching whatever the fuck ECW was, I mean, spoiler, alert, right? I'm in I'm in the past now, but whatever ECW was, I had a great time watching this. Oh and yeah, we no, doesn't was... have to deal with ECW ever again, right, fellas? I hate you so much. My name is Paul <laughs> Heyman. Oh my god, what the actual fuck? Dave, tell me about this it's orange <laughs> Alright, so this episode starts with just a talking head promo of Paul Heyman, who is here just to talk about how, yes, the RVD John Cena match was kind of scuffed, and there was interference, and all of the refs were dead, And Paul Heyman counted the match in. It doesn't matter. Anything goes. And RVD is the actual champion. It was ECW rules. Duh. (laughs) Duh, (laughs) stupid. Duh. And And tomorrow night on the Sci-Fi Channel is the ECW world premiere. And on this episode, the WWE title will be rechristened. To the ECW Championship. Sure now, thing. I just want to take a... a... Alright. All right, quick aside. Oh, fuck. <laughs> My... ECW's invaded. In. No! No, ECW rules has just happened to my office, I guess. Uh, but, so, I like how... I guess part of the stigma, right, is people like, wrestling isn't real. And then it went on the sci-fi channel? So, you know, hey, more power to you, I guess. But he then talks about how Edge is the number one contender, and he is invited to come over to ECW and fight for it, which I think that's neat. Uh, 
And then RVD just kind of comes on the screen and goes, I'm RVD. And just stands there and spins the spinner belt a couple times like a little kid playing with a toy. And then just kind of looks into the camera. And then it fades away. I win that belt. As we as we peer into the future of the next day, RVD shows up on ECW and also just spins the belt and says, it spins. No! He says, it spins. No. <laughs> <laughs> Ty, show, show a little bit clip of him spinning the belt going, it spins. <laughs> he does not. Yeah, he does. He does. <laughs> yes, he does. You have to add, you have to add, I don't know what it's called, but it's like a fucking noise maker that does the, the whirl sound. <laughs> yeah, I got you. Oh. Uh, do you guys remember when the Sci-Fi Channel actually spelled Sci-Fi with I's instead of Y's? Yes. Yeah, that was uh, yeah, that was before the History Channel became propaganda and talked about mermaids. Those are the also, good times. The show <laughs> airs Tuesday History nights. Channel? The show airs Tuesday nights at 10 p.m. Mm -hmm. Tuesday at 10? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wait, that's so late. Yeah, oh because it's because it's live after SmackDown, so SmackDown's still taped. Jesus. While ECW and Raw are the live shows, brother. That's the most important. Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> Uh okay, sure. Why All right, they just tape back down. Whatever. Hey, it, man. It's stupid. It's stupid. <laughs> you love it, dude. Okay. Get out of ECW, Dave. Get out of that. I'm I, I tell you what, come to ECW, Ooh. Dave. You and I could switch. Mm, <laughs> no. You bet. And so <laughs> You know, the intro to Raw plays. <laughs> All this happens. The drugs. The drugs are there. And then our boy, Randall Orton, comes out. Raw icon. And he... The icon. The Legs. little legend. Not broken. Yeah. His uh, his ankle unhindered currently. He comes out. He's cheesing to the crowd. Everyone's super excited. Uh, mm -hmm. One of his many really good theme songs he has plays. It's great. And then... Kane's music hits and Randy Orton's face goes pale as, and they put it uh, well when they said, Orton realizes he's gone from fighting the wrestling machine Kurt Angle to the red machine. <laughs> and then Kane comes down with his half shaved head that still looks fucking terrible. I have a note about that. It's so bad. I never it's noticed so that before. And I think it's like the back half of his hairline has started to like really grow in the last couple weeks, so it's really obvious and it looks <laughs> yep. so bad. Yep. Um, and then they start the match, and for the first time, uh, Kane actually looks kind of weak. Randy Orton shows up from SmackDown and starts laying the beat down on Kane. He puts him in the corner. He starts bullying him. He gets the first few hits in. And then Kane stands back up to fight. Randy whips him into the ropes. Or, no, I'm sorry. Kane whips Randy into the ropes. Randy just doesn't come back to him. Hits him with a standing drop kick and basically kills Kane. And everyone's like, oh my god, he defeated the machine. But what if he gets angry? To which he does. Kane then stands back up. Uh, and then just enters rage mode. He undertakers up. Boots Orton. To start slapping him to death in the corner, and then hits him with a sidewalk slam. Uh, and then he enters like a finisher charge-up animation. I think this is the first time it's been so animatedly done, where he just holds his arm out and just kind of paces around the ring, waiting for Orton to stand back up. Grabs him by the neck, goes to kill him, but Orton slips out of the ropes. And then just starts trying to escape the ring because he has bitten off way too much. But Kane just follows him up the ramp. Very, they both very slowly. Like guys, am I crazy or was it just a like a fight in slow motion? Yeah, it was where a they fight just, in slow motion. Kane they just start like very slowly, just chundering up the ramp, just punching Orton in the back very slowly until Orton goes, "I'm gonna get you," and tries to RKO him, which just gets countered because Kane cannot be stopped. Orton is laying there broken. Everyone claps. And then the imposter Kane shows up. <gasps> I know, so when they're scared. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> no. Cut that. So, Cut that. Imposter. Uh -huh. Imposter Emerald. 
Imposter Emerald was scared. <laughs> then the Canes both just lock up in a neck grabbing contest. But Imposter Kane truly is the, the most devious one here. Because then he pokes real Kane in the eye. He sees the and evil. What? He sees the evil. And then he just throws Kane off the stage. Because after he pokes in the eye, I guess, Kane just powers off. And yeah, it happens. Then, huh? Yeah, it happens. You just kind of die. Yeah. yeah, you just kind of die. You just kind of die. Oh, yeah. I guess They'd seeing got evil is the thing he does most. Oh, you're right. It was a double count out because Orton and him just fought yeah. on the ramp for yeah. ever. Kane was just bullying Orton and just like, I'm not getting back in the ring. Fuck this. I'm going to kill him. Yeah. So it was another match that leads to nothing but building up the Kane versus Kane gimmick that is currently happening post see no evil. Oh it and was everyone's funny. still confused. But yeah, like it was honestly though, this is the first time that Kane has been, I would say, like animated and doing actual moves in a long time. Instead of just kind of stomping around and being menacing. What so, I think it's a nice change of pace. He doesn't have to fight Carlito or Chris Masters or Shell <laughs> Benjamin anymore. He gets to fight Randy Orton. And he's like, all right, yeah. sick. Yeah, I'm going to go on a hot one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, all right. Did, did you notice that uh, uh, Randy Orton comes out, crowd was, like, loving him. Then Kane comes out. They all said, fuck Randy. We're voting for Kane now. And just, like, always cheered for Kane and booed Randy. Yeah. Yeah, and and then they both got counted out, and they just the crowd just kept booing. <laughs> now I have a I have a question for you, Ty. Yeah. Do we know how WWE management feels about everyone cheering for Kane all the time? Because historically, they don't like that when the <laughs> bad man gets all of the I, pop ever. I think so, Kane's supposed to be the face in the situation. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Okay. Because now he's sympathetic. Because old Kane trying to kill him. Uh, Instead of him being a, a psychotic okay. man killing Big Show, Big Show gone. Whatever you say. I, okay. It right. switches so fast. <laughs> yeah, well, there was no build-up. I just assumed he's still the bad guy. I also, the count-out happens completely like off-screen. Yeah, my kill yeah. Just, like, just, eh. yeah. yeah, it just rings. And they're like, oh, hey, whatever. Yeah, and then they're fighting on the ramp. I have several notes about this. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, Dave, there's one commentary bit that I think you called out. At oh, one which, point, or at some point. Uh, one of uh, you talked uh, the about... Fighting uh, machine, the wrestling machine? Oh, I did. <laughs> I did. I brought oh, up. <laughs> okay, that was Ty. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Ty, do you want to yell about that yeah, particular... Yeah, so fucking JR won't shut up about See No Evil. And oh, <laughs> he's yeah. He's just like... Oh, what the fuck did he say? He was... Uh, He's like, oh man, I hope he's in the next movie, Silence of the Slams. And I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck are you talking about, JR? Yeah, there's an earlier JR line where he's talking about uh, Randall trying to fight Kane and it's not working. He's like, oh, this is like duck hunting with a shuffle. It just won't work. I also had that <laughs> written down. So we've got that. We've got two signs of interest. One is just a picture of some guy that somebody has brought here. <laughs> yeah, I saw that too. And then there's another sign that somebody's just drawn the Kool Aid Man on, and the <laughs> sign just says Kool Aid. Yeah. <laughs> so, shout out to Kool Aid. <laughs> I'm sad I missed that. I saw, I was, I saw I was at some point. At I'm not even sure like when it happens, but it said Bob Saget, marry me, please. <laughs> I think I have the Bob Saget sign written down somewhere, but I don't have it here. And hey, listen, Lex Luger was in the crowd somewhere. Was he? There was a sign just pointing down saying Lex Luger. <laughs> yeah, I seen that. Good. I was really confused. The Lex Express is in town. In Penn and, State. In my, and in my notes, when Kane fights Kane, I just have Kane in my notes. So it, I just have written Kane and Kane start fighting, but Kane gouges the eye and uppercuts, uppercuts Kane off the stage. If I ever have to call an actual match between these two of them, I will not remember which one I'm talking about. Yeah, I, I, just I, said I had to. I had to take great care in <laughs> writing down Imposter Kane every time. Bald Kane fucking exploded that table for real, though. 
Oh, he fell yeah, off dude. the ramp. It <laughs> explodes. Speaking of exploded, oh, Charlie. last week Charlie Haas exploded <laughs> Lillian Garcia's wrist. It feels like ten years ago. It really does. <laughs> We've reviewed so many shows since that point. Yeah, also, in the meat space, uh, most of us haven't watched an episode of Raw in, like, a month and a half, two months because of scheduling reasons, so... Yeah. All your faults, by the way. Charlie... Not mine. We're back, baby! Charlie... I'm gonna get ready to lock in. This is gonna be a dumb episode. Charlie decides to come down to the ring. I didn't even notice it was him. His music just eludes me. I'm like, who? Oh! Ty, he's your favorite! I, man, I, I don't know what to say, man. They're showing uh, Lillian getting killed from the week prior. Her wrist exploded. Uh, yep. Again, I don't know why Charlie Haas was running at the ropes like that, being a fucking gremlin. But he, he, got, he cuts a promo. Reckless. He cuts a promo, guys. And he goes, ah, uh, Lillian, I'm so sorry. Can you please come in the ring? I didn't mean to do what I did. I was being careless. I'm so sorry. She comes out. She's wearing a, like a wrist brace. Uh, yeah, it is. She it heavily is legit, sprained her wrist. Legit injury. Really extremely respectful this episode. Just Absolutely. Say. He's oh, like, yeah. and he apologizes again from the bottom of his heart. He keeps messing up his lines. I feel like he, Charlie Haas oh, yeah. not talk that well. And Lillian's just like, I, 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 I guess I, I don't. And then Viscera, the world's largest love machines here, and he goes. Oh, Charlie, that was real oh. sweet, man. That was real sweet. And my lady Lillian here, she may accept your apology, but me, I don't. <laughs> and he's close like the shit out of God, Charlie Haas. And I'm like, no, our tag team. Yeah. I, how could they do that to how Charlie? Can they, how can they kill another tag team? It's the Spirit Squad Dude. has nobody to fight. <laughs> I want to say real quick, after he says, I don't, someone don't. in the crowd just screams, no. eat him, Viz! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Honestly, it might be my favorite part of the entire episode. Just that guy screaming, oh. eat him, Viz. Oh, this this was getting into the ring. I can't remember who <laughs> said it, but one of the, uh, it was either Kang or Jr. And one of them said like, "Oh, this was so big, he could eat he could eat both uh, Lillian and and Charlie Oz." That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> viscera beat the shit out of charlie just slapped oh, him yeah. and he threw him oh, in the clo yeah. turnbuckle starts clotheslining him and then this was like ah i'm gonna squish this man he just ran off the ropes gave him a big splash lillian lillian just didn't know how to feel about this whole situation she kept trying to stop him by yelling at him i honestly thought she was gonna get hit by viscera it would have been a whole Ooh. other thing but it didn't happen. The the heat icon himself kills another heat icon. Absolutely devastating to me. I'm I don't want to see them fight. This absolute C-list fucking angle is now just <laughs> happening. Do you think Raw. they'll ever do you think they'll ever have a match on Raw? Never. Never. <laughs> okay, fair enough. They have to. Look, here's the thing. Chris Masters can't be on this show over this. Just unbelievably in the mud <laughs> thankfully chris masters wasn't even in the episode i'm looking oh what the hell that okay i'm just looking at the the heat card we did have schnitzky beating rob conway i'm sorry i'm sorry martin i'm sorry god fucking damn it he still has a job though we can we can we can find solace in that this shit is weird <laughs> What else happened on yeah, the show? I, nobody else has any greater analysis than yeah, this happened. <laughs> what do I? What do I say? No. <laughs> Listen, no, I'm not we, saying you're wrong. There's we, nothing to analyze here. These we just two jobbers are out here fighting because Charlie Haas, the worst <laughs> promo in the world, ran fast at a rope and hurt the announcer. Who's <laughs> the most over person in this segment? Is the fucking <laughs> ring announcer? I know you needed a minute just to collect yourself to hearing Rob Conway losing. So we just need yeah. to give you some silence. It's rough. And speaking of silence, <laughs> we've got a coach backstage segment. <laughs> oh, God, old, uh, he's back again. This. He's back again. He's we our got GM. Coachman. He is in Vince's office. He's yelling at this crew to get everything ready because Vince has the big state of the WWE address 
uh, coming up, oh which is like really weird. And it just goes to show how, just how big Vince's ego is. He thinks he's the president of the United States, which he is not. Um, but what if? What if? Hmm. Hmm. Uh, what if? Uh, and this this segment is like a minute. It just it's just him yelling at this crew. Yeah, you gotta get this shit done. And then he just like like turns around in silence and just like does a big sigh, and then it cuts away. I don't know why I'm they a... filmed it. There's I'm no a... importance to it. What? I have what do you a real, want? I have a real question for you. Yeah? Do you remember the names of any of the crewmen? Oh, no. I, I don't, don't think he said them. He did. He, he did. I don't oh. remember either. Don't worry. <laughs> well, uh, I that, don't. Luckily, I won't be on your Kinkins next time. I would have wrote all those names down. It's Sam. Sam. <laughs> Sam, get the camera. Hey, Bill, what are you doing behind there? <laughs> what are you doing? I don't know if that's his name, but it's Bill now. Like, some of them had some interesting names. I remember that. S- Salazar, what are you doing back there? <laughs> yeah, Cyrus. Come on, dude. The virus? Mark? Fuck. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> Gotta be a little quicker than that. <laughs> Welcome to the Con Air pa- cast. <laughs> Now, now, Nico, are you are you asking me this question because you really don't want to talk about our next segment backstage with you, Dean and Duggan? No, I'm asking this question because for whatever reason, it was like, <laughs> how do I put this? Like, he, he kept saying their names like they're supposed to be characters, right? Because it's not like. Oh hey Marty, get the cameras. Oh hey Amble, uh, grab the paper. We're hey, supposed you to know. Do do yeah, he kept going like Marty, Marty, Marty. You gotta do this, Marty. You can't move this. I'm like, the fuck is going on? Like that's how I'm gonna do the main event from now on. Marty, Marty, yeah. Marty. You gotta do the main event, Marty. And he goes, no. Dude, I hope William the cameraman has an action figure out there somewhere. <laughs> Please. <laughs> yeah, like why did they film this? We need to <laughs> set up. Come on. Yeah. Why did they film this? Is the story of this episode? Why did they film really? this. Because, <laughs> I mean, it's almost like the guy who owns it's booking himself at the top. Wow. It's come true. on. Come on. No. Oh, no come way. on. No way. What? The you, hell? Uh, Nico, tell us. Tell us about Eugene and Duggan. Oh, Eugene and Duggan. So, Eugene comes out, well, Eugene's sitting on the chair, and he has, like, you know, he's got the little tape, but he drew a smiley face on it because, actually, I don't know why. He, he got bonked on the well, head in ECW. Know, but, but why the smiley face? Because make, make him you happy. Feel <laughs> okay. Anyways, he's just, like, he's talking to somebody, he's like, I don't know. I got a bad feeling about that match with Fubaga tonight. And I'm worried. Ooh. Worried? You're worried? Do I look worried to you? And we pan up. It's Jim Duggan. Hey, tough guy. Oh. Now, I guess he decided he's Matt Stryker because he's given him a history lesson about uh, George Washington and Bay Ruth and somehow Godzilla got involved. I'm not even <laughs> sure. Yeah, but Babe Ruth been... fought Godzilla on top of the Eiffel Tower. Don't you remember this in history? This is a history <sighs> moment. <laughs> yeah. it happened. I, you know, history's not my strongest subject, so... Um, I don't think it's anybody's it strongest subject. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so, you know, Jim Duggan's basically just going wild on a shtick. He talks about bombing people because, you know, it's all sick, so it's very American to bomb people. Yes. Yeah, and, USA. You know, Eugene is, just doesn't know how to handle this. And, you know, Jim Duggan runs off. Now, I have a question for all of you. Uh-oh. Okay. And it is a question to behold. Yes. Uh, okay. Should I do my secretly planned Eugene oh, segment God. now, or oh. should I wait for yes. after the match? No, you have to. What, after the match or now? No, right now. You have to do it. All right. So, folks, 
one of the things that I've seen, and I think we've all talked about, right, is Eugene as a representation. What do you guys think? Do you think Eugene's doing a good uh, job representing? Uh, what do you, representing uh, what? I'm very well, somebody with disabilities. Oh, I I don't think so. Okay, and I remember a long time ago we talked about like nobody actually thought this. So I compiled some comments I grabbed off this very site. Oh no. And I'm going to read them to you, and you're going to tell me if you think it's genuine or if it's like, or if it's complete bullshit. Uh oh. Oh no, don't do this to me, Nico. You guys ready? No. Yeah. Okay. So, our first comment was actually from a year ago, and it goes Eugene's character was heart roaming. You can overcome the, overcome the odds despite disabilities was the message that Nick portrayed perfectly. Uh-huh. Do you think that's genuine, or do you think it's bullshit? I... No. <laughs> that's bullshit. <laughs> bullshit? <laughs> bullshit. It's gotta be bullshit. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's on the website. It has to be bullshit. Uh, that is a real comment. <laughs> oh, my God. Next comment. For what I remember... Eugene was supposed to be a wrestling savant, so good on them for writing a character like this completely and not just being the butt of everyone's joke. Genuine or bullshit? Fucking well, what? No WWE fan actually watches the WWE, so I'm going to say that's real. Yeah. Yeah, that's real. Yeah, that's a good point. That's real. It is real. Next oh one. Oh my god. Nick Dinsmore did a wonderful job at betraying somebody with these issues. I truly believe that he is one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. No, that was, no, that was you. That's you, dude. That's something that Pete <laughs> wrote that for sure. That's some bullshit. Yeah, yeah Ty, <laughs> Ty called that one. That was easy. All right. <laughs> As a kid, I liked Eugene a lot. Something about his childlike energy and joy was just contagious. But today, someone who works with people with special needs, I think it's kind of corny, and I can definitely see how it would rub some the wrong way. I also think the character of Eugene did help bring awareness to the fact that oh. people with special needs can be unbelievably strong and athletic when provoked or misled. I really want to oh. believe it's Ooh. not real. Ooh. That's that's a real comment for sure, that's, dude. That is definitely real, but I don't want it that to be. That is so real. Because he's unbelievably oh, yeah, strong. That's got to be real, but I don't want it to be because it's too long. <laughs> <laughs> it is. All right, next one. As somebody with autism, I truly appreciate Eugene. He was truly an inspiration, and because of him, uh, I've moved up at my job at the post office. <laughs> That's you. That's you. That's you. Nice little fucking postal joke, you fucker. I'm gonna kill you, dude. I'm gonna fucking kill you. I'm gonna fucking beat up Nico. I I see him. He's he's like ah, you got me. Yeah, yeah, that was. Yeah, 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 you got me. Next one. I'm I'm autistic, and to be honest, the way the other groups have been represented by the WWE, I think I have a pretty easy. I feel sorry for the poor guys in Africa who are represented by Akeem the African Dream and Saba Siba. Oh. <laughs> I don't oh. know anymore. I'm scared. Yeah, I don't. That's, that's fake. Um, that's got to be fake. I think that's real. I think the it's sad real. thing is, like, in and of itself, that comment isn't entirely wrong. <laughs> like, if that's why I think it's real. If your basis is how the WWE portrays things, yeah, I guess. Yeah. So that's real. Yeah, that is real. Damn. I liked Oof. Eugene. He was one of a kind. At times he came <laughs> along, it seemed like every guy's gimmick was I'm like Stone Cold I'm like Stone Cold Steve Austin. Hell yeah. Eugene <laughs> literally uses the stunner. <laughs> Yeah, it's got to be real. My favorite wrestler is Stone Cold. Yeah, it's got to be real. Real. It is absolutely real. As an auto as an autistic person myself. Nico, how many of these do you have? Uh, not too many more. What do you mean, not too many more? <laughs> 
All right. I'll, I'll do a couple more. We'll a couple? How <laughs> many do you have? <laughs> give me two more. Okay, I'll give you two more. All right. Is this kind of one of the two? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, as an autistic person like myself, yeah, I liked Eugene. He had some rough spots, but he's pretty likable, and he had a lot of skills. Great for a short-term face. Also, I got to love people who decided to get offended on behalf of others. Even worse when so many of them will try to silence the people by trying to defend by claiming that those people don't know any better. It makes me sick. What? (laughs) I don't know, but I think that's real, because I don't think Nico would make up anything with the word skills in it. <laughs> well, uh, I think that's fake. Just because, like, the word soup uh, uh, stopped coherently coming through my brain, <laughs> it's got to be real. That's what makes me think it's real. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's a coherent thought from somebody else. <laughs> nah, it's, it is real. Yeah. And last one. As someone with both a mental and physical disability, I'm autistic and paraplegic. I loved Eugene. It helped me see the humor in my disability. I didn't see it as something offensive. And using the disability to get the heel heat was a stroke of genius. <laughs> showing that someone who has a disability similar to mine could get over as a heel. Overall, I found it funny and also in a weird way, kind of empowering. It was used as a joke sometimes, sure. But the way Dismal played it was perfection. I hate you so much, dude. That's fake. <laughs> I hate you so much. I, I'm playing the fifth because I don't want to. Everyone else could point their direction. But, uh, you gotta do it. No, you got to vote <laughs> because I'm gonna yell at you. <laughs> you got it. It's okay. I can take it's it. It's so long. It's a stroke of genius, Nico. It. Huh? It's a stroke of genius. I'm gonna kill you, dude. <laughs> You're done. So is it fake? Yes. <laughs> That's fake. That was 100% completely real. No! No! <laughs> you got me. You fooled me. Ah, so, ah. audience, I just want you to, I just want to reiterate, only a few of these were fake. Most of these comments are real. So, if you ever think, I don't know, what are the Eugene fans like? We just gave you a nice little sample. Eugene Holics, the Eugene Holics. Would, so now... would you call yourself the Eugene Holic, Nico? No. Oh, okay. No. But why? No. Uh, I don't know. Like he, he's a fine worker, but I just hate the gimmick. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But thank you for letting me do my Eugene segment. This was all based off a comment that was made on one of the earlier episodes we had. So I tracked down all these comments to show Ty that yes, we got people some were truly fans. inspired by Eugene. Yeah, and people were inspired. He's an inspiration, Ty. Yeah, I bet. Remember this, everybody. He's an inspiration, not just to all of us, but to my buddy Chuck too. Thank you. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you, Chuck. I'm gonna uh, kill you, Chuck. Speaking speaking <laughs> of backstage, we got Tori Wilson for a second, and uh, Nico, what do you guys say about that? Uh, just like a quick second, she's just walking down the hall. Yeah, she's just kind of walking down the hall with the dog. Uh, she's getting ready for the mat. It's, it's very cold in here, you, you could say. Yeah, you could say that, but... <laughs> but, but I'm not going to. Okay, fair enough. All right. Dog. It's the State of the Union already? State of the Union. Uh, Vince, yeah. his fat, flabby box head is on screen. <laughs> Uh, he calls the WWE a promotional juggernaut, and he mentions that a third brand has arisen, and that is ECW, which will be premiering on the Sci-Fi Channel at whatever times, and that there is a new WWE champion, Rob Van Dam. And then he talks about the ass-kicking he got last week from Triple H and and how he brings up the fact there are children who watch this show fuck you Vince you are the worst motherfucker <laughs> you were literally putting your ass in front of the children you were ogling and and 
sexually assaulting these women on screen, on camera. Uh, and then he then he puts and, on the wet and wild contest right after that. You know? <laughs> uh, and and he's gonna sick the spirit squad on Triple H as he brings Triple H down into the highway to hell. We got another one, folks. Can't be stopped. I gotta go to the bathroom. Go to the water sports or whatever. <laughs> what a state of the union from Mr. McMahon. <laughs> what a state of the... You know what? But as uh, as Emerald did mention, we're gonna have a gauntlet match tonight. Gauntlet. With the Spirit Squad and... Oh, 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 and we're gonna d- demolish uh, oh, Triple H. <laughs> That's what He makes like all these faces the entire time. Oh, oh. Yeah, there's a lot of really good Vince faces in this episode that hopefully editor Ty I want to up here or are in the thumbnail. Yes, sir. I'll get better. <laughs> and so I we go it. from uh, one segment that uh, Nico ran that might never make air. Who could say? To another <laughs> one that also might never make air. We have a wet and wild contest Cont- match, whatever you want to call it. Uh... Yeah, Nico, I go ahead. I have a shocking amount of play by play here, but you know Dark. Yeah, you know, and I just had that long segment, so get turn the clocks up for another sixty minutes with Nico. Sixty <laughs> Yeah Yeah Give him a All long right. one. Alrighty, so the wet T shirt con- No, it was the oh, wet and wild contest. My my bad. Name wet. Wet, the wet and wild yeah. contest. What a match. Do you know it's for? There's actually a reason. To... Yeah. I actually I missed that. It's I, for I gonna... the cover of the WWE Summer magazine. <laughs> That's why they hate each other and want to kill each other with water. Could could you imagine <laughs> if like Nia Jax and Rhea Ripley had a water contest? You can't you can't tell me this. Well the cover of <laughs> Of the WWE Summer Magazine. You can't tell me that. Yes. <laughs> I mean, look, if they were down with it, <laughs> sure, I'm down, but like... Don't sexualize our just, women, pal. That just... That wouldn't happen today. Wow. I'm glad for it. That's all I'm saying. Matt, shut up. Matt, yeah, shut Matt's, the fuck up. Matt, go back to being cucked. Jesus. <laughs> All right, so let's go to the match. So the match starts off with the water water guns. Uh, obviously, the scales aren't good. Gears of War hasn't came out yet, so they don't really know <laughs> how to look strafe or take cover. Also, they can't aim for shit. Coming soon. Uh, yeah, coming soon. They did throw some water balloons at each other and some weak throws. You know, I expect, like, these women are athletes. They should know how to throw a water balloon. Or they at least should know how to throw a grenade. I don't know. I feel like every wrestler should know how to throw a grenade, but that's just me. Grenade. Uh, basically, this happens until Candace is like, fuck this, and slams her straight into half of the balloons in the pile. And then Candace, actually, I think this is her best move. She picks up Toy, and she's holding her for like a good five, ten seconds, I felt. Probably five seconds. And does a nice backbreaker to drop her. I, I thought that looked really tight for Candace, who's usually a little sloppier. So I just want to give recognition that that, that was a good backbreaker. Uh, she then positions her and does a nice little slam on top of her <clears throat> for a count. No go. Well, she, hold on. First of all, when before she went to do that, she opened up Tori's shirt and put water balloons on Tori's titties and then did a splash on it. So they exploded. It was crazy. And Jerry she Lawler did. was like, ah. <clears throat> Oh, my <clears throat> God. God. Sorry, my eyes were elsewhere. For all my genetic freaks that aren't normal, this is the match for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it, uh, uh, trust me, it only gets crazier from here. Uh... She then, like, throws a rod of bucket at the ref instead of toy. I don't know why. <laughs> Come on, he she got just... killed. <laughs> yeah, poor fucking refs. Like, the fuck? And Jerry goes, extreme shrinkage. <laughs> oh, no. Jerry also says, oh, we don't want to see that. And then JR says, well, maybe Siegfried and Roy do. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> 
<laughs> this is the most insane episode I've ever seen. It's, this was pretty up there. This episode uh, is going... We're, are we going to beat the record of episode length here? Perhaps. Jesus Christ. Yeah, this we're only is a third really of the way show. through. Uh, okay, so she grabs... Now, she decides she's really going to taunt after this, so she grabs one of the balloons... And she takes a nice bite of it, like an apple, and she just rubs it all over her chest. And it's a very big close-up shot. I will say, aesthetically, it's on point. This is one of Kevin Dunn's <clears throat> better shots. If you want to see typical Kevin Dunn look, go back to the recap of the Triple H angle from last week. This was actually a well-done shot for what they were trying to convey. And then she goes for that big elbow drop. Misses. Uh... Toy does a terrible missile drop kick or a like knee drop kick. I'm not even sure what she was trying to do. It looked bad, and it was bad. Uh, she then goes to the tone buckle. She throws her in the tone buckle, and then she decides to you know douse herself in water, you know, because like she's the baby face, and you know, like. In Shades of Rikishi, she gives her the old well, Rikishi stink face. Well, she had to water herself up to give her the water stink face. Yeah. As JR said after her- the match ended, he said he doused, she doused her with butt water. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is what we call, um, you know, this Chinese water torture, and then this WWE <laughs> water torture. What do you mean? <laughs> what? I mean. what? <laughs> uh, can please expound upon that? Okay, so in uh, Chinese water torture, what they do is, like, you know, they put, a, like, a very damp, wet cloth on your face, and then they'll drop, like, you know, a drop of water at uh, inconsistent times. This was kind of like that, but inconsistently, you get a watery ass in your face. <laughs> Candace, no, are you okay? <laughs> this is psychological damage. I am hope she's talking to a therapist. Uh, then... Candace escapes, and Tori's got the water gun. And Tori, she decides to wait a bit. I don't know why, what her plan was, but she gives Candace enough time to move out of the way, and I think she hits either JR or she hits Jerry. They kind of both dodged. They might have honestly missed. But basically, like, she she cannot get this hit. <clears throat> and then Candace is now running away like like her way she's trying to crawl to the t- corner uh she's just looking for help right she then gets a gut kick completely doused in another bucket of water and then toy hits her finish goes for the pin toy wins she celebrates she's all happy she starts throwing water balloons at j uh, and king telling me that she was trying to hit them with that water shot earlier. This was intentional. What? This was an intentional attack. No way. She grabs her doggy, walks <laughs> off. This was the stupidest of these segments I think I've seen, but it's probably the most fun of these stupider, sexier segments. Because, like, the bikini contests just kind of suck. Like, the yeah. nothing. This was, like, a really dumb gimmick, and but it was kind of fun. It's like, they had some creative ideas, but, you know, it was what it was. I, I just kind of wish that somebody would have went with, like, the water gun hit to the head for the finish, but I guess it was a DQ match. I, I thought it was insane because of the, the like, water being everywhere and them being super yeah. fucking wet and them trying to do a suplex and shit and just falling out of their spots and just breaking their neck was insane. Yeah, that was Candace, pretty Candace took so many nasty bumps during this match. Like, she come on, did. man. <laughs> she did. This was a uh, bad idea. This was unsafe. No, but... no, it was really bad. I think, though, to your guys' point, I think that the real vibe of this entire show is it's really dumb, but it's just they just try to make it hype the whole time and fun. But it's, yeah. I'm surprised they added stakes to it, even if it's minimal. They're like, it's for a cover. It's like, they could have just been, it's one wild, guys. Come on. And nobody would have cared either way. How many goons out of five do you guys give this? Uh, let's ask Editor Joe. Editor Joe watching. I'm calling you out, pal. Let's see how many goons yeah, make there sure are. You, 
And then get us uh, Erotic games. Joe's numbers, too. We need Erotic Joe's numbers as well. Oh, yeah, and Editor, uh, editor and Erotic Joe, please give us your numbers. Please, so we can, please. So we can have an average gooning number. It'll be in the video. Here it is. Wow. 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 <laughs> Jesus. Surprising ratings. Holy but moly. Both Editor and Erotic Joe are the masters of the scale. Why look at Meltzer's ratings when you can get the double E rating system? True. E. Now we go from what one wet and wild match to another. Because we got Spirit Squad backstage. What? No. Wait, well, you Betty. don't you don't you don't think Triple H is a very wet guy? So I wanna interject really quick. Before that, well they once again promote the ECW thing that's happening tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And they put up uh, just such a fried image of <laughs> of RVD up there, like they always do, and it just it made me laugh Here. enough. I had to I had to grab a picture of it. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. E Squad, throw this one up. Yeah. <laughs> Wait till we get to the match cards later. Jesus Christ, oh. <laughs> they're even worse. Speaking of even worse, the Spirit Squad. Woo! Are now here. Yeah. They're backstage and they're like, yeah, we're gonna fucking kill Triple H. Guys, it's game over. Oh! <gasps> Guys. Oh my god. And oh my god. Go to our match. It's time I to am, play the game. Ha <laughs> ha! I am already. Uh, actively fast forwarding through entrances or recaps. By the way, there's a really long recap of the title match from last night. So, as many segments as they have, they're still killing time on this show. And they recapped but, the so, whole segment of everything that happened in this few two. <laughs> yeah, so I'm hitting the plus tens real hard. <laughs> so, H comes out, you know, does the H thing, whatever. And then. You know, he's like, hey, fucking send them out. I'm ready. But their music doesn't hit. It's Vince's music. No chance. Oh, no. What Vince comes got? out. He's like, hey, ref, we don't need you. Get out of here. Also, remember how I killed Shawn Michaels? Let's look <laughs> at it. And then they show Shawn Michaels being killed. And Vince is like, tonight, unlike Shawn, we're going to fuck your cock really <laughs> slow. <laughs> Huh? We're gonna watch it. <laughs> Mikey, get out here. Mikey runs out, is immediately clotheslined. Hunter taunts Vince, dubbing the eye to him. A few counter strikes, so he goes on the defense for a second. And then Hunter just starts beating the shit out of him. Vince is angry, pogging. The crowd is just chanting DX for some reason. I don't know what these people could be possibly on about. Yeah. So, so Mikey just gets ruined. Vince is like, all right, uh, Kenny, get out here. <laughs> And then uh, is, Kenny is also immediately killed. Triple H goes back to kicking Mikey in the ribs repeatedly. He goes to pedigree Mikey. Kenny saves Mikey. Then they throw Triple H into the corner. And they beat him. And they beat him. And they beat him. Until he avoids a corner splash. Gets a neck breaker. Throws Mikey over the ropes. Spine busters Kenny. Then it's like, Johnny and Nikki, get the fuck out here. What? So... Two yeah, one? two of them are coming out now. And then they just start beating him. And beating him. And beating him. And beating him. The crowd chants for Sean as they beat him. They throw him on the outside. And they beat him. And they go to break Triple H's leg with the chair. Like they did to Sean Vince. Like, wait. Break his fucking neck. Oh my so, god. So they take the chair, and they have it around Triple H's neck, and it's like, wait a minute, where, where the fuck is- Oh, bitch, I forgot. Get out here. And then Mitch is thrown out like that, DJ Jazzy Jeff from Gorilla. That was so crazy! <laughs> and Vince is like, an another great Vince face. Ah! I was like, what? Ah! And Shawn Michaels, like his best friend Jesus, has arisen from the grave, is out here on the, mi on the ramp, he stares down Vince, who was really pissed off. Hits Mitch with the sweet chin music. Sean thinks about just killing Vince, but he's like, wait. My boyfriend is in that ring. <gasps> Sean runs down, and they clear the ring. They all hit their finish. 
I forget which squad man I f- almost dives to the pedigree, but almost gets fucking killed to sell the bump. I don't think it's Nikki. Might have been Monkey. Maybe. And the crowd's like, we're excited. Hold on. They look at each other. They're in the ring. They look back at Vince. They look at each other. <laughs> they high five, and ladies and gentlemen, they do the suck it. Oh! They do the suck it. Oh, Vince is so mad. No they hit the suck it. I go crazy. Dude. Number one DX fan Derek is here to review the rest of these DX segments in their entirety now. <laughs> He's so fucking happy. He, oh they my did god, the suck it. Derek. Bro, 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 the bro, they they did the suck it. And oh then my god, Triple this... H, he get the ass out. He moon Vince. <laughs> he get the ass out. Vince is going <laughs> crazy. Vince was about to fucking cry too, like legit. He's like, oh. Dude, <laughs> no. This, I I think this was the greatest segment of the night. It was this exciting. Was cool. it, it was, was good. Exciting. It was they, great. They did the suck it, bro. Woo! They, they did, if the, it, suck did it. the suck it. I, I think know. if it wasn't actually twenty two minutes long, I would be more excited about it. But the pop off when they do the suck it was crazy. Yeah. Bro, like there's bro, no denying that. Bro, Hunter got the ass out, bro. He did. Listen, we got to see Sean and Triple H kiss. We got to see Triple H pull the ass out. This is what we've been wanting all year. This is everything we wanted. This is what I've been telling you guys since the first episode. Triple H is the hero of Raw Down. He he is the greatest there, and there's no one better. He might be cooking. I I refuse to believe you. You you can. You love the chaperone. Bro, bro, you love the suck it. (laughs) Suck it. With the suck it. No, so, like dick, <laughs> like dick, bro. Yeah, I, I know. Like Chad dick. loves the suck it. He was the big you know, like dick, bro. No, no. I'm a dick. That's homophobic, bro. Well, that on. is. Love dicks here. What the fuck? Hey, my name is Dick. But Marty, what I'm happened dick. backstage? I'm the only straight man right. on the world. What? That's crazy. <laughs> Please elaborate. No. <laughs> All right. some, guy with the, some guy with the fucking weird chain just wandered out of my room i don't know i did he did he say anything in the mic that's crazy anyway uh vince is backstage with the spirit squad he's like all right and he's making more great faces here that i'm sure have been shown or will be all right listen <laughs> We're gonna, all of you are gonna fight DX at Vengeance. And you're gonna, they're gonna fucking die. We're gonna kill them. We're gonna kill them live on air. It's gonna be great. And that's the segment. Yeah, um, it was, is DX like their old tag team name? Yes. yes. Old faction. They were Degeneration uh... X. Yeah, uh... break it down, yo. Break it down. Break, break it down. <laughs> I, the only thing I can really break down is my bones. Emerald, are Why? you ready? Are Hold you on. ready? I, I, I need a bit of an expert here. Did uh-huh. Triple H and Shawn Michaels really tag team in DX? I don't think they ever did. They always felt like did. the New Age did. No, they never tag teamed. I, don't, I feel like they like rarely ever fought as a tag team. Yeah. They were just kind of they were kind of homies. Yeah. yeah. It's two singles Which... wrestlers. Yeah, that's why they got, like, the New Age. Those were the tag team bombs. And then you got the little X-Pac. Break it down. Bring him back. Where's he been? Fuck! Where's the X-Factor? We got Where's... one We got one third of them. He got everything I ever wanted. And I want to give him back. Well, I know you hate that factor. Oh, dude, my God. Dude, can you imagine God. if that was our sponsor? That would have been a good, that would be a good segue, dude. Oh! Sponsor us, please, Factor. Yeah, Raw is brought to you by Skittles, Burger oh. King, and Nacho Libre. Woo! Nacho! Nacho Libre, That's right. I went to see because I did not have air conditioning growing up, but it was really hot. <laughs> uh, I would have rather sat in my house fucking melting. That is the, <laughs> the second worst movie I have ever seen in my life. Oh my god! Check, Check out, out the sponsor. Check out, we are not sponsored by this. 
for uh, uh, my live suicide. <laughs> I'm so vote. excited. November 5th, V for Vendetta, our four hour plus podcast. I'm not kidding. It is going to be that long. <laughs> Woo! Holy shit. It is the greatest podcast we've ever done because it is the longest. <laughs> That's how it works. People are saying this. <laughs> Absolutely. They're all back mowing the V mask. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh my. So yeah, so Duggan shows up, right? <laughs> and he's like, oh, uh, Jim Duggan, he got the flag, he got the board, he got the Eugene, he, he got, got the, the good theme music, bro? he got the wood. Bannon! I, I never knew that Hacksaw Jim Duggan's theme music was so good. Bannon! Bring it back. Bring it back, baby. <laughs> So he gets down to the ring. You know, everyone's excited. Look at Jim Duggan. Also, I want everyone to know, at this point in time, he is 62 years old. Oh, he's st- no. He's still hanging in there. Yeah, he is 62 years old on this episode of Raw and is getting into a feud with Umaga. Bad, bad decision. Bad decision. But, you know, so he stomps around the ring. He does his hoe. He yells. He's 62. You know, and then Umaga shows up, and then everyone goes, Whoa! And Umaga just starts screaming, uh, Samoa! Samoa! There is no Armando introduction. And we just get straight into it, because as Umaga starts climbing through the ropes, Axel just runs up and starts just punching him. Just punching him in the head. Just hitting him over and over and over again. Of course, it's ineffective. Umaga hits him once to stun him. Ties him up into the ropes. Which King then refers to as the Tree of Woe? Yeah, that's what they call it. <laughs> I I don't think I've ever called it that <laughs> yes. though. It's like yes. since we've been watching, and I was like, that's awesome. So he puts him in the in the Tree of Woe, and Umaga does the thing, you know, where he walks around the ring, he looks at the crowd, he starts charging up to kill Jim Duggan, but Eugene sneaks over, frees him, and then gives him the two by four. Umaga then turns back around, pushes him back down, grabs the 2x4, and inspects it as though he has never seen clean-cut lumber before in his life. Oh, God. And he hates it. (laughs) He yells at it and then breaks the 2x4 over his head, stunning everybody, because that's crazy. And then he looks to Armando, who's holding out the cigar equally as excitedly, and then snaps the cigar multiple times, exploding it into shrapnel. It was an insane explosion. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> and then Umaga, you know, grabs Jim Duggan, hits him with the spike. He falls dead. The belt rings. Armando holds up Umaga's arm. Everyone cheers. Except for Eugene, who comes to the aid of his like mentor and now best friend. He tries to help him out. But Umaga turns around, sees this happening, uh, hits Eugene, grabs him to tie him into like the middle of the ropes by his arms. So he's just stuck there crucified and crying as they make fun of his uh, dead friend. And then Eugene uh, just has to sit there and cry while Armando talks about how he's stupid, thinking that anyone can step into the ring and try to fight the Samoan bulldozer. Well, Umaga drags Duggan's body into the corner and then, you know, does the big run across the ring, hits him with his ass, breaks his neck. Jim Duggan is presumably dead after this moment in time. And then we just leave out seeing Eugene crying and Armando is just like miming, kicking dirt on him (laughs) As, as the camera leaves. Will anyone be able to stand up to the Samoan bulldozer? Yes. Uh. <laughs> ah. Health complications. Oh, come oh. on, dude! Oh, <laughs> come on, man! <laughs> Dog! Come on! Uh, at a time, bleep that up. No, we're gonna I amplify just... it. No, that's... Uh-huh. Yeah, no. Uh, Make it chopped and screwed, please. Yeah, chop and screw that. Why would he say that like that? (laughs) I'm just being honest. I'm just just being honest, man. (laughs) Your honor, I was acting silly. (laughs) 
I was acting silly. I just went a little too over the edge. <laughs> Your Honor, extreme. my client pleads oopsie daisy. He was. A, I told you. <laughs> he's extreme. You put me on ECW. You did this to it me. It hasn't happened yet. <laughs> Not yet, at least. Oh, it's he's close he's... enough that it's happened in my soul. Speaking of, speaking of extreme extreme stuff that shouldn't be said, here's Mick Foley and Jesus. Ric Flair. <laughs> Mick, Mick Foley uh, comes out and he's like, you know what? You see this eye? I can't see anymore. I hate Terry Funk. Guess what, guys? I'm I'm just going to move on with that chapter in my life. I don't know about all that. I'm going to change it right here at the University of Pennsylvania. Raw, dude, he fucked it up. How could he do that? And uh he's trying to explain to him his next chapter and then woo! He's back, baby. We got Rick Flair, guys. And he looks very old, <laughs> very, very old and decrepit. And he's like, "Wait a minute, I gave you your your entrance. What are you What are you doing here?" And Flair just just goes on a fucking tangent about how amazing he is and how stupid he is for tearing his body apart with barbed wire. He could never do anything like that. And you know what? There's only one person that's on equal basis to his name here, and that would be. Joe Paterno, and I, 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 I melted in my chair. I said, "Oh Lord!" Yeah, is that Samoa Joe? No, 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 no. no. The only person no. that would know about Joe Paterno here is Martin, <laughs> and that is no. I, I know. Do you know about Joe Paterno? I know. Yeah, of course, I do. Wait. And so no, the I, Nature I Boy is. saying that he is as cool as Joe Paterno really got Other... me fucking weak. Oh my God! Did he? Okay, I'm gonna be honest. I just saw Rick Flair and Mick Foley yelling at each other. I completely missed that Joe if, Potato if, comment. If Mick, Foley, if Mick Foley came up and said he was Jerry Sandusky level, I would have left and just canceled the pod forever. But he didn't, so <laughs> Mick Foley's <laughs> safe. You son of a bitch. What? We could have had this done. I'm sorry, dude. No, not you. It's Mick's fault. It's Mick's fault. We could have finished it. Yeah. Uh, Flair says ECW suck. And you know what? You're just a glorified stunt man. You're nothing to me, brother. Woo! Woo! You know what, brother? This pisses me off. You know what? You're just gonna come in here and act all like this. Well, guess what, pal? That's not what it's. You're not. You're not as good as me. Woo! And he just starts rambling. This was like Woo! a very long fucking promo. And Mick Foley goes, "You know what? Guess what? They didn't care about you at the first Starcade. They didn't care about you when you fought Steamboat." Hell, they're too young to remember you and Terry Funk in 1989. And so I looked up on calculator and I said, how long ago was 1989 to 2006? Well, it's actually the same distance from 2024 to 2006. And I went, oh, goodness gracious. Whoa. Ow. <laughs> I said, ow, Jesus. <laughs> Actually, yeah, correct. I, it's one year off, 17 and 18. <laughs> I'm sorry. Close enough. Yeah, dude, do your math. Come on. Ah, man. Whoa. Uh, let me cook. Uh, yeah. No. Okay, fair enough. But you know Get what? Get out of the kitchen. You know what, pal? You know what's really gnawing at you is the fact that you can do nothing about it because the glorified stuntman in the ring could rip you apart like that. And then Flair's like, did you say like that? And he throws his coat on the ground. He's like, ah, dude. And he elbow drops the microphone. <laughs> right now, say it. Take it. I'm looking you in the face. And Flo's like, I got, I got blurred vision, man. I can't. I could take you out like that, just not right now. And Mick leaves. Rick, my eyes, they're so messed up. I may mistake you. And starts slapping Joe Paterno around. I said, yeah, do it. And uh, Flair's like, what do I got to do? What do I got to do? Go extreme. Woo! I want your ass in this ring right now. Foley! Foley, woo! Your ass with me right now, woo! Please, I Foley! I have a challenge for you, Rick. He's like, yeah, you know what, Foley? I got a challenge for you. I'm not going to fight you in some extreme crap. I want you in a wrestling match in your hometown. And two out of three falls match at Vengeance. And Foley's like, yeah! Yeah! <laughs> you got it! It's I Charlotte. Think Flair, I think Ric Flair should be <laughs> the chairman, not Vince. <laughs> Do what? I have good news for you about an angle from like five years ago? <laughs> oh, wow. 
the consortium was Rick, dude. That promo no. got me excited for no reason. Just when fucking Rick starts throwing off his jacket and Ebo dropping his microphone, I was getting like sweaty, dude. I was like, yes. He, he was, was yeah. He was a the only person who man. can. The only person who can out crazy Mick Foley in a promo is Ric Flair, and I'm really glad that they did that. I think someone was typed in the Discord. Ty was watching us at like 2.30 in the morning. Yeah, I was so, <laughs> so excited in the office, dude. So yeah, Ty is uh, awake in his room, sweating. <laughs> as his wife yeah, is dude. trying to sleep, presumably. <laughs> and Ty's just like, yeah, he elbow dropped the mic, woo! I, uh, yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> Hey man, it was a very exciting segment. I don't know why I'm. I want to see this match. It's gonna be dog shit, but I'm ready for it. <laughs> It'll be fine. How many combined working knees are in this match? Oh zero. Think? Emerald, take a look at that gif I just sent. I'm gonna post it where Rick took <laughs> off all of his clothes, <laughs> took off all of his clothes in his boxers, and then hits an elbow drop. <laughs> he got him, dude. He didn't even elbow drop anything. He, just <laughs> he got him. Me too. He he taunts yeah. you, saying that's what I'm gonna do to you. He also, why do they continue to use a young Ric Flair PNG for all the promo <laughs> cuts? <laughs> Look, <laughs> I don't know. His face is upsetting in like regular P. If they chopped and screwed him like they did the RVD. Do you want old Ric Flair shit in his pants full of doo doo? I don't think you do. I, I do. <laughs> hey, uh, editor Ty, can you please put up uh, <laughs> Ric Flair saying, "Do you want me to say it, or am I? I'm about to say it." And he's just very dry. And then at the end of the segment, where he's very wet and red because <laughs> he got so angry. Yeah. At Rick. yeah. Emerald, I don't think you've seen insane old man Ric Flair since you've been watching the show. What do you think about that? This is why he's a legend, pal. I think if he had that energy at the um the the briefcase match where he fell down the ladder, he probably wouldn't have gotten hurt when he fell down the ladder. He didn't care that much about getting killed by Umaga either. He was just like, yeah, it's this happened. is true. He, yeah, he grabbed Umaga by the balls. Yeah, it'd be like that. Woo! How juicy do you think they were? <laughs> <laughs> what? Bro, well, I know. You're dying. Wait, question goes back to you, Nico. Throw up Ric Flair in the V Max with the pants. I, I, and say I don't know. On the ass. I, I, I'm just trying to find the real questions for our audience who do care because I support all of our audiences. Hey, if you're the one person in the audience that wants to see Ric Flair juicy, let us know. <laughs> let us know. It was all a dream. <laughs> Juiced up on paper magazines. And to that one audience member that owes me money, I will find you. Dude, get out of there. Dude, get out of there. Dude, get out of there. Emerald's got a gun. You got to get out of here, man. Time to I'm play fine. the game. Ha <laughs> ha. Time to play the game. <laughs> we'll just, like, spam taunting because we really don't want to talk about the next match. Nah, that's a That's a Marty segment. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I couldn't find a transition to it. it was like everybody just down. You just gotta talk. You gotta but... play the game. Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah. You're right. Johnny Nitro's theme song. It's time to play the game. No, not him again. He's just Edge. Well, who's on commentary? But you know, I've got Edge. I've got it. Emerald, those abs. No. He counted. Count he... Oh yeah, you do. And we love the counting abs gimmick here, don't we? Yeah, I think when we get to to uh, I think I'm just predicting in 95 years there's going to be a show called 205 Live that we're gonna review. Oh, and hopefully there's somebody who counts their abs on that show. I think it's gonna happen. I <laughs> ate a bunch of Detura. I've seen the visions. Do they not know how many they have? They have to count them. I think he counts eight sure. every time, maybe ten. Huh. I have one ab. <laughs> oh! Yeah, Alright. Alright, editor Ty, throw up Emerald's ab. There it is. Whoa! There it is. He goes okay. one. Alright, so there's a f wrestling. Alright, everybody. Huh? Yeah. 
So we're informed via shitty graphic that we're getting Carlito versus Johnny Nitro versus Shelton Benjamin and a triple threat for the IC title at Vengeance. Oh. So Shelton comes out. He's on commentary. I have no notes about what he says. He just seemed to be rambling most of the time. So we start the match, uh, you know, Car- uh, they Johnny Nitro and Molina come out. Molina do the split, but Johnny stand in front of the split. We do not see the ass. Very upsetting. So the split has been done. They have Johnny Nitro and Carlito have a really shitty back and forth. Most of this match is just Carlito standing in the middle of the ring, letting Johnny Nitro bump around him because Carlito is awful and lazy and should die. So they have a really bad <laughs> back and forth. Oh my God. Molina steals the apple, and Carlito is like, "Hey." Give me Da Apple back, and he gets kicked in the head by Johnny Nitro, who takes over. We get a patented Molina shriek, and Jerry says he wants to use Molina's thighs as earmuffs. That's crazy. <laughs> Thanks, Jerry. <sighs> Johnny Nitro flips out of a suplex, another back and forth that Carlito gets the better of. Johnny Nitro just bumping around of this fucking jobber its entirety. Uh, then credit to Carlito. He does finally take a bump out of the ring. As he just gets kicked out or whatever. Shelton stands up from commentary to move about two feet closer to all of this. Uh, Molina on the other side of the ring is distracting the ref. Carlito comes back into the rope. Johnny Nitro is on the ropes. Carlito goes for the back cracker. But Shelton Benjamin has run over to Johnny Nitro. Grab Johnny Nitro's hand so Johnny Nitro stays upright. Carlito results in taking a back bump. And then, is Johnny Nitro's finish a weird corkscrew fist? Or is it just a horrifically missed standing twisting moonsault? It's a horrifically like, missed moonsault. Okay, yeah. So Johnny Nitro does a standing twisting moonsault that gets uh, nowhere near Carlito. I asked if it was a punch because the only thing that comes remotely near Carlito's head is his hand. So he just basically flips onto the floor. But this is enough to kill Carlito, who's sweaty after doing two wrestling moves. And uh, we get the one, two, three. Johnny Nitro wins. Finally. Is that his first win on Raw? I think so. Yeah, I mean, it, what he's only had two matches, right? Yeah, he, he got killed by Cena, and then who else did he fight? I, I mean, yeah, well, he, I don't think he fought Sheldon. Oh, maybe not. No, this was his second match. Second match. Yeah. Oh, so, okay. which it's fine. It's like at years. least he lost to the champion. Like you know, it's still stupid, but at least it's the champion. And then he beat. Um, yeah. Yeah. Good for so, him. So, yeah, it, this isn't as bad as it could have been. I, I've seen much worse debut. So, uh, good on John Morrison. Who? And, Who? Who? Uh, only talk about John Morrison. This is today? Johnny Nitro, pal. Johnny Nitro. Oh. There, you know what? Fuck Johnny Nitro. I, I hate the stupid name gimmick. Well, yeah, this guy fuck looks kind of like Johnny Impact, I'm going to be honest. Yo, fuck Johnny Impact. Fuck all the Johnnies. He kind of looks what? like Johnny Mundo, too. Yeah, yeah, if your name is Johnny and you're listening to this, fuck you, man. Fuck Turn the you. shit off. Stop changing Johnny, your last name. Johnny, Johnny. You were... Just because you're lies. an yourself. <laughs> fuck it. Terrible. Yeah, Shelton was only here to make sure He's that build uh, Carlito lost because all he was talking about was how Carlito beat him in the last match they were in. It's sad. It's sad. Get them all out of here. I, I can't believe Johnny Nitro stood in front of the splits. We weren't able to go crazy. <laughs> oh, but the announcers were still going crazy. They're like, oh. Well, you see, on, here on oh, Smack yeah. Up, she do the split, we go crazy. She do the split on Raw. Johnny Nitro put his head in the way. We do not go crazy. Yeah, can't do that. We already had enough wet and wild. Yeah, this is the, the red one. <laughs> this is not the blue show. This is the red show. True. Blue? Huh. You ever wonder why we're here? Never. Speaking of uh, wet and wild, we still got another women's segment. Nico. <laughs> Just for you, pal. Well, I'll be fine. Ended off strong. Re- oh, no, you'll be Nico, I... you fucking ape. <laughs> so, we are backstage. No, this is Patrick. <laughs> 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 I 
Okay. <laughs> okay. Are you, are you okay. So, we cut to backstage <laughs> with, uh, I forgot that loser's name. Todd Grissom, <laughs> Todd, dude. Come on. Todd Grissom. Todd with two Ds. Well, like, Todd miss him. <laughs> uh, Todd Grisham. Uh, all time, all time run of bombs here, ladies and gentlemen. And I didn't have one of them. At least in this run. There were several earlier in the episode, but holy fuck, dude. There was no bombs there. I detected no bombs. <laughs> all right. Had my we'll statistician look at it. Edit. Detected no bombs. Detected no bombs. bombs. Building seven. <laughs> what? No, no, hold on. Run, run that back. <laughs> wow. No. Is that Donald Trump saying Building Seven? Building Seven, folks. Can you, folks. Ex- can you please expand on that? Well, I guess where all the bombs were it was an inside job. Everyone knows this. It was an inside job. Okay. <laughs> We lost nothing. I tell you, all enemies say we do. They're lying. We did not. Shadow Moses is still as secure as ever. Okay? I'm glad that got canceled. We still got all the nukes. <laughs> all of them. If, if Emerald was still paying attention, he'd be so pissed. <laughs> we keep them safe. We keep them safe. And just in case, we got a snake in the grass to make sure everything's okay. And guess what? It's not Crooked Kamala. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, Mickey James is back here. Ty Christian's like, wow. Hi, Mickey. <laughs> oh. This <laughs> whole thing is falling apart. <laughs> Mickey's backstage. Oh. Todd Grisham asks her, wow. You know, that was a good match but uh yeah beth hurt herself and mickey's like oh my god isn't it crazy that like everybody gets injured for talking smack about me first it was ashley with the broken leg then it was trish with her broken arm and then it's uh beth with her broken neck it's like it's almost like if you talk about me and call me crazy behind my back bad things seem to happen and that's okay and then she basically went on some uh, <laughs> went on some tangent about being the champion, you know, standard stuff. And she walks off for a true woman star of the year, Randy Orton, to step in. How did Beth break her jaw? Uh, there was a spot in the match from last week where um, I think <clears throat> she got slapped really hard or something, and just fucked up her jaw. Uh, oh. She talks about it actually recently in some interview. Uh, I, th- I forgot where, but yeah, like um, yeah, basically a spot went wrong in that match, and yeah, so she's going to be out for a bit. Uh, Dang. So Randy Orton's like, you know what? I did lose to Kurt Angle at ECW under their rules. But that shit's stupid. I want Kurt Angle at Vengeance. WWE rules in a WWE ring, and I know he can't beat me in that regard. And man, I love Randy. <clears throat> Randy's best goal, but Randy definitely has some ways to come to what he will be in his prime. I think we'll have to definitely see you on Vengeance his... talking about that match. I guess we will. But uh, I'm hyped. Best girl Randy's here. Mickey uh, didn't really care. It is what it was. They really don't care about our women's chant. Is are you ready to get high? I'm I'm high already, seeing these two well, little t- Scottish boys <laughs> hanging around New York City, and uh, Robbie and Rory are here, the Highlanders, and they're just chilling around the city. Uh, I think it was Rory. No, no, it was Robbie. Robbie's the long hair one. He gets into a trash can and starts eating a sandwich out of the <laughs> trash can. And Rory goes, wow, that's incredible. Free food. Wow, that's awesome, bro. Oh, my God. We're homeless. No, we're not homeless. We're in New York City. <laughs> 
<laughs> they just, they'll never actually it. be on the show. <laughs> They're never going to show they, up. I guess they'll show up at some point. They're just stuck in the city. They were supposed to like that. Vince Vince really sent out his uh, his excursion from Scotland. He goes, I got these two guys. I really want to sign them. And then he didn't send them anywhere or any information to go. So just chilling, Wait. going, where do I go? Are you sure they're not Egyptian, though? Explain. Hmm? Highlanders. The Highlander. Mm, yep. Mm. Yep. The Reckoning. Ah! And then, then Roy McAllister comes or whatever. Rory. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Robbie. Watch Highlander, everybody. I'm Rory. Yeah. Good time. Not the Quickening, though. Not the Quickening. <laughs> Actually, watch the Quickening. The Quickening. The quickening. But yeah, I can't wait to, for them to debut, and then Martin will have his head explode. Because this, this is a real bit. Paid? No, no, they were on heat. Don't worry. Oh. These are our, this is our tag team division, pal. We already lost one earlier. Big ups. To call this a, a division is being really, really generous. Is this Grizzled Young Veterans? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, one of them is John Silver for sure. That guy really does look like it. Because, uh, yeah, Rory. Rory looks exactly like John Silver. Hello. Hello. You know what? I can go Keep through the card real quick. I can go through the card real quick. We got a Vengeance card. We're go we're we got two <gasps> weeks for another pay-per-view. And they came back with the GOAT of all dog shit match card graphics. I can't believe it. We're back, baby. Look at this. Oh, yeah. They got yeah. me coming. So we got Shawn Michaels and Triple H. DX is back versus Spirit Squad in a five-on-two handicap match at a pay-per-view. You know... Oh, oh, speaking of match graphics, uh, they showed earlier in the night fucking all five members of Spirit Squad with all five belts on them. I laughed so oh, hard. Oh, yeah, dude. They, they <laughs> I don't know why they keep using these like old graphics, too. John Cena's got the chain gang outfit on. Uh, so we got a two out of three falls match. Ric Flair versus Mick Foley. Speaking of what Emerald said earlier, Ric Flair is just a young version. And triple threat intercontinental title match. Shell Benjamin defends against Carlito and Johnny Nitro. And then WWE Championship match. RVD versus Edge. RVD looks even worse than he did in the Extreme Rules promo. <laughs> or ECW One Night Stand that uh, Dave posted earlier. It's crazy. Look at this, look at this fucking Triple H on the far right. Right? <laughs> he's, what he's, he's mouth? That, he's it pouty. looks like they added a mouth in post. <laughs> yeah, I guess not what he looks like. <laughs> Also, why he is has... Mitch in front? I uh, could... shut up. Okay. That looks like a chin they added in Photoshop. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's real every... bad. Everything will be posted up. Don't worry, we'll show the four matches cards for everybody. Everything is. Editing is getting better. I promise. Please. Editing editing. You hear him clicking? Oh, you, dude, you just need another edit. <laughs> Emerald, tell me about this edge moment. We're edging. <laughs> edge moment. Well, we start with... I can't remember her name. I rarely see her. Maria? But she immediately... yeah. Oh, that's Maria? That's Maria. Oh. Well, Maria gets kicked out by Lita, so it doesn't really matter. Oh, okay. oh, uh, Lita goodness. takes the mic to announce her boyfriend, Edge, who is just a fucking traitor... He what? speared John Cena, cost him the WWE Championship belt. He has forsaken the hardcore uh, co-ownership of the hardcore championship belt, which is like completely I done. I think it's gone. Yeah, no, like Mick Foley yeah, moved on. Yep, like that. That was a short-lived uh, bit. Uh, and he's talking about how yes, he planned it. He he made sure John Cena lost the belt because he's going to take it from RVD. That's how confident he is. And then uh, yeah, we're going to we're gonna show up to ECW on the Sci-Fi channel because we got invited. And <laughs> Lita does this fucking really good impression of an alien. Or is it really an impression? <gasps> oh my. How do we know she is not from outer space? Does he <gasps> Does, does, does Emerald know? 
I has. know many things. I say he does. <clears throat> oh, and man. then, and then uh, we we cut to uh, ECW guys showing up in the crowd at Raw. Oh. What the fuck? Yeah, I'll name them off because no one else knows who they are. Stevie no, Richards is it. here. I know Pauls. Nope. Okay, okay. The Go. Jobber EWO <laughs> have arrived. They have a ticket. We got Stevie Richards. We got Just Incredible, who is better than Tommy Dreamer, according yes. to Ty. Remember that. And we've got Balls Mahoney, Woo. number one concussion enthusiast, owner mm. of the worst match at one night stand. Uh... How much longer is he alive? Balls Mahoney dies in, like, what, 2018? 2019? Oh, wow, we made it that much longer. Good for him. Yeah, hmm. so they show up, and they're like, we have a ticket. We can sit at ringside. We're here, guys. We're cool. We swear. We have a combined... Did did Just Incredible get the belt, like, right as ECW was about to die? Or was that some other jobber? Uh... No, he held it for like over a year. He's like one of the longest reigning champs <laughs> over there. He, that's crazy. Uh, what an awful, awful company. They gave it to Ryan at the end. <laughs> this guy's most generic shit looking wrestler I've ever seen. He's <laughs> Factor. I got Stevie Richards. I ever in. <laughs> shout out to your YouTube channel. Some of your stuff's pretty good. And so now we get Edge versus John Cena. Again, everybody get excited. Fuck this match. Vengeance. Check it out on WWE Mobile. Open up yeah. your flip phones. Woo. Shout out your T-Mobile flip phone. <laughs> this is 2006. That PNG or whatever the fuck of that phone is hilarious. This is when enough people still watch WWE to get like even the T-Mobile sponsorship. It's probably Cricket and Boost Mobile in like three more years. Yeah. Woo. And the comments tell us where you at. Anyway. So, John comes out, you know, whatever. And Edge, who is already in the ring, runs up the stairs. They start fighting. Rams John Cena into the stairs. Throws him into the ring. Cena then just turns around, beats up Edge. Just kicking him in the corner. And then immediately Lita jumps on John Cena's back and it's a DQ. This is taking a minute. Maybe. 42 so, seconds, apparently. Yeah. So, the match is done. Lita is thrown off. John Cena teaches, teaches. There we go. <laughs> teases beating the shit out of her, but he doesn't. Edge tries to run away past the Jobber EWO. Cena goes to chase him, and the Jobber EWO <clears throat> cheap shot him, and then uh, he kicks the shit out of all of them. He has them all with chair shots. The only one the camera picks up is Balls Mahoney taking the chair shot on directly to his head. And then John Cena gets on the microphones like, at one night stand, I got an awakening to how ECW does business. If anyone can show up and do whatever, I'm going to go there and ruin everything. I love this shit. This is great. I am so fucking horny. Ah, ah, ah. Ah. Very unsettling faces. <laughs> and there's your program. Are you okay, John? 42, yeah, 42 second main <laughs> event. A bunch of loser ECW guys show up and get killed by John Cena. And Cena really, really is edging. Why do you do that to I... balls like that, dude? Balls did not need that. He <laughs> balls like legit <laughs> fell. He yeah. should have gotten the way. Killed him. Maybe balls. Maybe he should have landed on his balls. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, oh. fair enough. Uh, for anyone listening in the past before Extremely yeah. Sideways comes out, get ready to watch Ty bomb live on air as I say, <laughs> Tommy Dreamer didn't even show up to the first ECW and then he was in the main event. So, oh. get ready for that, well, folks. Is this like when you dissociated on the last Raw and just <laughs> made up a Jonathan Coachman segment that didn't happen? I got bullied by <laughs> Pete. <laughs> you did. I sure am glad we're not covering ECW. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> hey, fucking so man, brother. Fuck all of you. You assholes. Yeah. Do you like ECW? What the fuck is your problem? <laughs> Fuck ECW. Ladies and gentlemen, I will again announce I will never be on that program. Wow. I will never be on Smack Up. That is a promise. No Smack Ups for you, pal. I will not cross any lines. And with my Unless. contract done. Ooh. 
Say it, Nico. With my contract done, if you want to find me, Nico, you got to watch Smack Up. Smack Up is the place to be. Smacked up. Smack Up is the next generation. Smack Up has the best of the best <laughs> content, commentators, crazy, dog. panels, everything. And we're not a bunch of raw doggers what? trying to do these wet and wild contests all the time. Yeah, but Nico, what if I just give we're you like a call more... every week and be like, hey. Can I get your uh, now, women report? And you'll be like, okay. Unfortunately, no, I'm banned after this. Um, Can I get the Chuck report? I, yeah. You'd have to ask Chuck, but Chuck is generally more extreme. Ah, uh, true. True. Maybe I feel maybe bad for Benny. I show up every now Benny's and then. Benny's dead. We'll Found see. dead in Miami. Yeah, Benny's, Benny's fucking dead. The Spirit Squad finally show up, but he can't even do his own segment. <laughs> they were gonna. They, they, they tried to book it. But then they found him dead in Miami. Tons of Sean Michaels. Sean Michaels. He'll, he will Shawn never Michaels be able to and... do his cheer that I wrote for him. Oh, man. You guys, uh, you guys ready for vengeance? No. It's already two no. weeks. No. Come on. We got one They're... more Raw. The Go Home shows next week. Uh, see, uh... I'm thankful for that. I don't have to see that fucker Kane ever again. <laughs> you got Raw <laughs> down, pal. We're all dogging down. Woo!